Welcome to the Texas Truck Channel, I'm Brian, and today we're going to show you a vehicle we filmed actually about two months ago. Unfortunately, due to some technical faux pas, some of these scenes were filmed out of sequence, so there's going to be a lack of continuity. Some of them were 90 degrees and we're sweating, some were 40 and we have jackets on, and for that we apologize. I do want to make an announcement that we are actually making an additional channel, uh, in addition to the Texas Truck Channel, and it's going to be for things just like this. If you like vehicles like this that maybe are from the... 90s, 2000s, maybe even the 80s, things that aren't brand new and aren't in that format, be sure to subscribe to that channel. It's gonna be called Unplug Garage. The channel is live, but it is not, it doesn't have any content on it yet, but you can hit the uh, link in the description below to make sure you don't miss any of that. Now, to our viewers, I wanna say thank you to everyone worldwide and especially our Canadian viewers for watching. Um, it's really helped us grow a lot in 2022. It's been awesome. 2023 is gonna be even busier. So we hope you guys have a happy holiday and a merry new year straight from Texas Truck Channel. Take care. Welcome to the 2007 Land Rover Discovery 3, or as some say here in the States, the LR3. It's a classic SUV. It's got classic SUV lines. I love that the roof tears up. It keeps the Discovery heritage and the whole Land Rover theme. This looks like a modern Land Rover. However, it's very Land Rover-y. In fact, there are already issues with the headlights. They're glossed over. I don't know what's going on there, but it's already covered. The side molding. Looks like there might have been some at some point, maybe from the factory, but now it's gone. I don't know if those are stripes. I don't know if, I'm not sure what's going on there, but there's some issues. Also, every time I get in and out of this car, it's at a different height. Not sure, really sure what's happening there, but I guess that's a Land Rover thing. And as the saying goes, Land Rover discovered Africa Unfortunately, Toyota kept it running. So with that, let's move on to the interior and see what Brian has to say about that. It's time to talk interior on the LR3. And there's a few things I want to get out of the way right away. And that is, I love the design in here. Everything has a button for it. There's no infotainment screen to get lost in because there's no infotainment screen. Back in 2007, if you didn't get the HSE trim, you just didn't have a screen. But the radio is good. It's a hardened Carmen and it freaking bumps for what this is. Also, you can wear gloves in the wintertime and handle everything in here. The buttons are big enough and they're designed for that. They're chunky and they work. It actually has Bluetooth. It doesn't have Bluetooth audio though, but there's a cable for that. Don't worry. Um, beyond that, there's some Land Rover things going on in here. Everything you touch with your knee, it creaks and not in a good way. The dash is just given up on life completely and it requires a dash mat to hide its, its sores. The window, the driver's mirror window on the driver's side window, up and down, you have to hit it just right in the sweet spot for her to be happy and work. Otherwise, nothing happening. You've got three sunroofs, which are super cool, but they're also super hot in Texas. They have covers and they're all perforated. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. All that out of the way, you do have stadium seating. Each row from first to second to third sits higher than the, than the one in front of it so everyone can see the road when you're driving. There's some things that just work in here. There's a ton of space and I love that the second row can not only fold down, but then fold flat so that you can sleep back there if you needed to. A lot of things are sorted out here. So all that handled, let's hop into the shop and check out the mechanics that might be good or bad here. Welcome to the under the hood portion of the Land Rover LR3 or Discovery 3 as some people call it. What we've got here is a little bit of a secret gem of an engine because Land Rover is not known for reliability. But what this sucker is, is all, by all accounts, even the internet will tell you, this is the most reliable one you could probably get in almost maybe any Land Rover ever. This is the AJ41, which means it's Jaguar design, 4.4 liter dual overhead cam V8, naturally aspirated as God intended with eight cylinders at a 90 degree angle. And here's the secret and the best part, built by Ford. In fact, this is even better than the Ford design four liter V6 you could get in this application, built by, well, somewhere else. We'll just say that. I don't want to derange anybody, any people group. So, but what this is good for is it re it's good for 300 horsepower and 315 pound, of, pound feet of torque. It's paired to the ZF six-speed transmission, which is silky smooth, shifts exactly when you expect it to every single time. And if there's any bad news, it's that it's only rated at 12 cities, 17 highway, 14 combined. Real world driving, we're seeing about 15 and 19 at best, so we're hitting those EPA targets. But the best thing about this, again, this is a little bit of a secret, it's a gem, and don't confuse it with the previous generation 4.4 liter BMW sourced V8, which is just god awful, don't get it. If it's 2005 and older, 
move on, get at least a 2006. With that, let's get through suspension and see what Brian has to say about that. All right, boys and girls, time for the nuts and bolts, and you know the deal. We start with the rubber. Send it in. Jeez, Christ. These are 265 68 teams. The brand is unknown. They're Wild Spirit. Never heard of them. They're actually really expensive, and the rears are something else, but, they're, but the same size. All that covered. This is an older truck. They don't match. Deal with it. Here's the real important thing here, and thing, something that has just been missed by a bunch of people in the off-road community, air ride suspension. See that puppy right there? That's the magic, that's where it happens. Imagine a coilover setup or a McPherson strut setup where the spring is around, the steel spring is around the shock or the strut. That's what that is. It's all one unit together. Now, as far as suspension design, Land Rover went through a lot of trouble to make sure that caster, camber, and tow stayed within a specific range based on the ride height of the vehicle. This is why you see a lot of cars that don't have air ride. It's a premium vehicle option most of the time. If it's a live axle, it's not that complicated because there's not a lot of this going on. But with a short long arm design, which is what this says, it's, I'm sorry, it's a double wishbone front and rear on all four corners, fully independent setup. That allows Land Rover to maintain caster and camber within a reasonable range, whether it's in access mode, normal height, or off-road height. One of the features of this is off-road height. You can do that up to 30 miles an hour and then it will return to normal height. So keep that in mind, this is not a desert basher. This is an off-road crawler. Land Rover's motto has always been as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. And that rings true to all of its handling attributes. Now, with that covered, let's get this thing on the road and see how it freaking drives. All right, due to some technical errors that we've done multiple times, we did not record this um, in car segment when we filmed everything else. So now it's winter time, we have coats on. Um, we fixed a few things on the rig actually. Yeah, it should be faster. Should be faster, let's see how that goes. Are you ready for zero to 60? Oh, I'm ready. Sport mode and transmission. Okay. Ride height is normal. Yep. All cylinders Load firing. It. Oh! Okay. A little clunk in the rear end, but that's okay. Soft suspension makes it feel faster. I like little it. Little weight transfer. And we're at 50, 55, it's basic. It's basic. and 60, and 8.77. It's basically a Raptor. Basically. <laughs> The weight, the weight transfer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say I ran it earlier at a best of 8.45, but with two people in there, 8.77, pretty not bad, good. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. So yeah, you fixed some cylinder issues. You've uh, yeah, done some spark plugs. You also dialed up some cooler weather. That's helped a ton. It's 46 degrees now instead yep. of 90. And that's pretty good. It's not bad. So um, you've noticed something with the seat heater, which this does have heated seat, have heated seats, which I love in the winter time. Yeah. Uh, it's still on, but even though it says it's off. Off. But you're Look here, Brian. The seat heaters work. Okay, I've never sat over there, so never is noticed the good news. that. The bad news is they always work. Well, mine's off, so that's okay. Well, that's okay. Okay. Well, so. in typical Land Rover fashion, there's some electrical um, things. No, that's on. today's ride. It could be different tomorrow. Yeah, that's never happened before. No one else has complained about it's that. Part of the charm. Part of the it's the charm, Craig. Part of the charm. Speaking of charm, let's talk about seating position. Seating position, Brian. I love the seating position position in this because you sit up high. You have low. Window sills, low dash. You can see the visibility is great. It's not uncomfortable. You're not in a weird, awkward. It's just a comfortable. It really position. is. And you've got the armrest. You've got armrest, and you've got center consoles. So hey, keep staying there. Easy, easy. And so that way, because it ha what happens is sometimes those go down. They don't really well, hold their spot, like, even though you can adjust it where you want. Problem is the driver's one is worn out, so it just falls down. It's an armrest, not an arm hold. Right. And uh, so that, but if that doesn't work, you just got the center. I use the center all the time because yeah. I just lean so, over, and then nothing's broken. Perfect. Stereo, Harden Carmen, and it bumps. Yeah, it's not it bumps bad. better than a lot of new cars mm -hmm. for sure. Plus, you got extra buttons in case you want to dial somebody. Right, right. It does have hand freeze calling, uh, it, and it also has the cancel. Command cancel. Ooh. Oh yeah, oh, okay. that's that's high that's tech. That's nice. Seven. Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. But the AC works like a freaking beast in here mm -hmm. in the summertime. We have three sunroofs. Ride and drive. Let's talk about air ride. Air ride is wonderful in this. You yes, you have some uh, shocks that are maybe old. We think these are all original. They are original, as far as we can tell. Yeah. And uh, look, Brian, over undulated roads and potholes and dirt roads, they just washboard. They ride. They it ride works. smooth. I pulled the Carfax on this. It's seven pages long, mm. and all dealer records. Okay. None of which have handled the shocks or the airbags at all. They've got at two hundred eighteen thousand miles. Yeah. Now because there's airbags, it happens to ride really well even with zero shock absorber happening. Yeah. Just but. 
The handling is uh, yeah, just uh, quite don't, entertaining. Don't, don't, yeah. That's what the handles are for. Right. Uh, all over. Uh, just don't take any turns at speed. The good news is the new Raptor does that same thing, and that's a positive attribute for it. Right. So right. Maybe that's right. the same here. The good. Yeah. Look, you're going to get there in comfort and style in the Land Rover. Hmm. Well. You should get there. You should get there in a couple yeah. of style. Yeah. But you always look cooler than the guy in the Toyota. With that covered, let's I'll, go to the hill. Well, hang on, but I'll say this. I'll say this. <laughs> I almost got that in there. You're probably going to get there because it's more of a Ford than a Land Rover, or the well, most Ford Land Rover out there ever, So, which means it's just more reliable. And that's because Ford built the motor, and these things are his, historically just that reliable. Yeah. The most reliable Land Rover is just period. Well, All that right. brings me to the hill test. Let's go. All right, we're about ready for the uh, hill test, but I want to explain this hill real quick. So it's kind of hard to tell on camera. It's really hard to capture how steep angles are and what this is really testing. So this is really testing approach angle and breakover angle. And that's because the climb itself is about 21 degrees. If you come down here and you actually put a level on it, you're talking about 21 degrees, 20, 21, depending on where you're at. With a almost 45, 46 degree step right here. And that's what really catches people out. Um, and that's where the breakover comes into play to get over that 46 degree step. So let's get to Brian and let's, uh, let's see how this uh, Disco 3 does. All right, it's time to do the uh, hill test and see what this bad boy can do. Brian, uh, what kind of good is we get we playing with here? Oh man, show the people right here. Multi-terrain select, you've got car. You've got car and snowflake and skidding road. The car and tree, car and cactus, and car flipping over. Also you have right height adjustable select Downhill, um, what is that? Assist. Downhill assist, thank you. And also high and low range right here. Okay, so, so with all that, Brian, what does that mean? Do you think it'll make it, does it have the approach and the breakover? Yes, it absolutely does, but I it, think. But it doesn't have the tires. It does not have the tires at all. So what goodies are you gonna put on to go over this hill? Well, I think the best one to do is rock crawl because this is loose gravel and rock. And that's the picture of the car with the, flipping, the flipping over. over. That's the flipping over car. Okay, so it's telling me to put okay. it in low range. Okay, so we got it in low range. Let's see if this works. Done. Low range selected. That was really fast, actually. Okay. So, so we're in low range, and ride height is uh, extended, which is the extended height. So yeah. we should make it. Let's see. Okay. Brian, well, I would say uh, no problem. Yeah, it was pretty easy. Uh, low range definitely made it more controlled. I think it could have done it for high, honestly. It probably could have, yeah. It dragged a little bit. That was really just nothing. Um, yeah, there's a heat shield down there. Heat shield or control arm, something along those lines. It's uh, no big deal. So. There's something that gave a crap. Yeah. That was great. All right, let's, uh, let's go wrap this thing. Let's, let's do it. it. All righty. Well, Brian has not joined me because he's in a slow Land Rover. Oh, hey. It's not slow. Well, I mean, it's fair. It's, not it's slow. just not fast. Okay. But we've had a, we had a lot of fun in it. It's Unbelievable. We talk about all the magic Stupid. it has. We also talk about all the problems it has, the Land Rover stuff. <laughs> Which we haven't touched all of those, by the way. No, we haven't. We've got a lot to get into on that. But let's get into objectives and subjectives first. I love it. And I want to start with, objectively, Brian, it's a Land Rover, which means it has no reliability whatsoever. You should not drive it 10 feet from your house. Otherwise it will blow up, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's not right. So what we've found with this LR3, we, and we'll get to more of those in a minute, it's just kind of worked. Now there's things, of course, there's warning lights out the wazoo, there's suspension errors, there's check engine lights, but you know, it starts, it blows cold air, it's stupid quiet on the highway and it rides like a cloud and it works every time we go into it. Very good, okay. So, and that's our example. There, there's a reason there's for others. reputations, but there you go. <laughs> right. All right, objectively, Brian, it's a lander, which means it can basically traverse any terrain whatsoever despite it not having stick axles and objectively, that's just not true. You can't go anywhere without a stick axle. Yeah, no, that's wrong too, because we've been blown away by this. Yeah. The gearing is incredible. It has hill descent control and it doesn't need it because the gearing is just right in it. And the air suspension is actually calibrated to droop when a wheel is floating in the air. And another point I wanted to bring up is that the vehicle will detect if you're high centered. If pressure drops in the corner, it will then increase pressure to all of the shocks and raise it an additional inch and a half. Hmm. It's got some tech behind it. What I'm saying is you don't necessarily need the stick axle to get it done. Very good. And the rest of the time, it rides great on the highway and handles very well. Objectively, if you're a Land Rover owner, you put your nose up to Jeeps and those peasants in that. And uh, mm -hmm. subjectively? Yeah, it's probably true. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. 
<laughs> not us, but, but yeah. there, that exists for a reason. And it does yeah. exist. Uh, with that, Brian, we do have a lot more coming on this actual vehicle, this yeah. LR3, this, this Disco 3, and you may have seen another video previously, a Land Cruiser, an 80 Series Land Cruiser. Yeah. So much so, in fact, Brian, that we've got something we want to talk about. Yeah, so we've actually bought both of these vehicles. We own them, they're part of the show now, and there's so much we want to cover here. We've, we've basically been blown away by these, we've decided, man, we need a place for these to live. So we started a new series on these two, and so we have so much, we're actually gonna start a new channel for it, a dedicated channel for it. It won't just be these two, we're gonna have more things kind of like this that are just fun for us. And if you like that kind of stuff, you wanna know more about these, we get into price, we get into reliability, we get into how they're to be lived with, and- um, Some of the repairs and maintenance Some of the repairs do. that go with it, yeah. And do you need to spend Land Cruiser money to do overlanding type things? Is it a disaster to spend perhaps less on a Land Rover to get that done? That's the dice we're rolling here, and we want to make a show out of it for you guys. And also prove a point that you don't have to have a Jeep. Yeah, it's not always a Jeep thing. And look, we're not bagging on Jeeps completely, but we are a little <laughs> bit because there's also a nose thing with Jeep people too. There is, and there's a premium on Jeeps that it's hard to, and it's hard to get in the Jeep game. Yeah, that's really what we're getting at. Right. We, for the money we spent on these, we couldn't get comparable Jeeps because mm -hmm. the value is so high on those too. Absolutely. So we're trying to show how you can affordably go do these things. That's yes, and point. so to find out that, that channel name and where to go to find all that stuff, stay tuned to all our socials and go to our website. <laughs> social, social, social media. No, socials. The, <laughs> the people know what that is. Okay, the people know. Yeah. All stay right. tuned on those uh, for more, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.